I'm blown away by the music every Sunday morning that Patty plays. Okay, so you're all wearing green. No pinching during the service. It's a no pinching zone. I saw Jaden's Hulk on his shirt. And it was if it was outside in the lobby, I would have pinched him if I didn't see green, but he's safe, he's safe. Okay, so welcome to the people here and online viewing. We're so glad that you have joined us. Please sign in on the attendance pad, locate in the pew, and pass it down. We would like to specifically welcome any visitors that we have with us today. So you will notice in your bulletins the prayer requests on the back of the welcome visitors page. Please fill this out if you're a visitor. And please fill, fill out the prayer request form and take it off or take someone off or put someone on because we believe in the power of prayer. Amen? Amen. So, new directories on the table in the lobby and there are extras for families that want one. Look inside the flap of your bulletin. So, please let me know if there is someone or a family that we don't have a directory for. So, I was left out of the directory flip through there last night. Okay, so she's gonna have to print an insert, but if any corrections come my way, I will let her know. So, I'm still your pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so the crowd walk, hunger walk is today at Greer City Park Picnic Shelter with registration beginning at two o'clock and the walk starting at 2.30. The walk is 0.66 miles around the park. A little more than half a mile around the park. Proceeds go around the world and here in Greenville to loaves and fishes. We will get go get at its frozen custard after the walk. Mmm, frozen custard. So, and you'll get back in time for Chuck Heyman's Bible study, which uses a Roman study by N.T. Wright. That will be from 4 to 5 p.m. through May 19th. Romans Bible study, Chuck Hammond is teaching. Wave, Chuck. Woo -woo. So who's ready for the Easter hunt? Egg hunt on Saturday, March 23rd from 10 to 11.30 a.m. We need volunteers to set up on March 22nd at 10 a.m. And also during the hunt, manning the craft tables, hunts for the three age groups, cookie decorating, and story time. And the last day to sign up and turn in your eggs is today. We need your help. Monday, Thursday, March 28th, there are several readings to sign up for. And when you've signed up, you pick the corresponding number, the reading you signed up for, and we will have a great worship. If there's no spots, 
There, if there's any spots not filled, probably making some phone calls. So <laughs> sign up. You may notice the Easter cards. Please grab one to place on your refrigerator and please give them to neighbors, friends, coworkers, and anyone you come in contact with that needs hope. Where bl flowers bloom, so does hope. And our Easter stuff is on the back. Our Easter stuff is on the back, including our Easter egg hunt. So, whew, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us, present as we go through life's journeys. We thank you for this holy moment we gather for worship. May we hear the songs anew. May we hear the word proclaimed anew. And may your ever-flowing love for us give us new eyes to see, hearts wide open to your love, and ears to not only listen, but take it to heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll ask you to stand and sing. Lead on, O King Eternal. Lead on. solo today. Give him a round of applause because he's working the cameras, the audio, everything up there. He's alone in the crow's nest because Lawson's taking a vacation, taking the time off. So thank you, Mark. Calling on God based on Psalm 126. Let us pray together. You know our tears and our sorrows, and you bear the seeds of grief within us. We open us this day to your comfort that nurtures these seeds and the sheaves of joy, the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Okay, Mark. Are you ready for the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith? So, will you turn in your hymnals to page 8? 881. And so, say it or read it along with me. Okay. So, continue. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
what a powerful sound that was. Let us breathe in the Holy Spirit. And out whatever distracts us. Let us breathe in the Holy Spirit. And out what keeps us from focusing on God and God alone. Precious Lord, our precious Savior, may we never forget what it cost you to die on that cross. How you prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, take this cup from me. But how you followed up with thy will be done. Help us remember the costly sacrifice for our good and your grace poured out for us. Help us be ever mindful of what that grace costs your very life as we go throughout our ba days sometimes on autopilot sometimes cloudy sometimes with our faces down or sometimes knowing where we want to go purpose help us to recognize your costly grace in our lives. Help us to notice when we're aha moment, the Holy Spirit <coughs> moment, when we're making decisions right and wrong. Help us to realize your great love for us as we make those decisions, whether to bring life or bring death. It may not seem to be a big deal to us, but it's a big deal for your kingdom. Because people are looking at us and seeing if we are named Christian, if we are named a follower of Jesus, if we are named disciples of Jesus, as this church is named. People have magnifying glasses on us. And that should not make us nervous. We mess up and we repent and then we mess up again. People are looking at that. People are looking if you change behavior. People are looking. The world is watching. Because they will never walk in the doors of this church. But they will see you and interact with you and know you. People are watching. It shouldn't make us nervous. It shouldn't make us glad that we represent the light of the world. That we are bringing light in the darkness. Oh... Have mercy on us when we mess up. Sweet Jesus, have grace upon grace for us as we be you to the world. Have mercy on us, your children. Have mercy on us today. We pray for the people that are hungry around the world. And in this own community, millions are food insecure. Millions are having to deal with food deserts. Millions have no food to eat in Haiti, particularly. Because of the gang violence, they can't leave their houses. We hurt. We long to help them. We hurt 
and long to help the people of Ukraine, the people of Gaza, the people around the world that are hungry. We walk because they walk. They might not be able to walk, but we are with them in solidarity one step at a time when we participate in this crop walk. We are with them one step at a time. Come draw close to the brokenhearted in this congregation, in the around the world. Come draw close to the brokenhearted. And we are all brokenhearted at some point in our lives. You are there walking right beside us, shining the light of love, shine the light of our hearts. Make us your instruments of peace. Make us your instruments of love so that where hope blooms, the resurrection happens. And now we pray the prayer you taught your disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done in the earth on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we give back to God what God has graciously given to us, by our tithes and by our offerings. Amen.
O Lord, the receiving of these gifts, that they may be used for your kingdom and your power and your glory in this world forever. Amen. Now it's a children's moment. So two kinds of suckers, because Enoch and Evie have been trying those suckers. I love lifesaver suckers, especially the blue ones, but they poo-poo them. And so I'm giving you options. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, I'm feeling so bad. Ugh. Uh, oh. So, and do I look sick with my big blanket and the plain saltine crackers and the medicine? I'm not going to turn around because of product placement. <laughs> <laughs> and so. The, the purpose of this sermon is we are fragile. We are fragile. It's titled, We Are Fragile. And so, <laughs> yes, so we are fragile. And you notice the rose that was dead is gone because the fertilizer didn't work. It got sick and died. And so plants and humans and all animals and all of creation are fragile. And so we have to take care of them. And so what Miss Kayla said, ask her how she's doing, would be a great idea. And so we send cards to the sick people. We visit the sick people at the hospital, both me and the rest of this congregation. And so it shows that we care. It shows that we think they matter. And so we're acting like God when we water the plants, when we recycle. We're acting like God when we walk on this crop walk. We're acting like God when we make ourselves be kind and share and love. We are fragile and life is fragile. And you know what fragile means? Yeah? No? No? Soft. Soft. Yes, soft. Oh, soft is a good word because it means we can easily be broken so we can take care of each other and not say mean things to one another. Yeah? Use your nice words, kind words. And so... Let's do that. Let's share the love of Jesus as we walk and talk. You're zeroed in on the candy. <laughs> and so I will give you the candy. But let's be kind and lift up the name of Jesus. Okay? And care about people. Yeah? That's what Jesus would do. See that picture? He is sharing with the caring with his children. He's being kind to the children, smiling at the children. Okay? Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for caring for us. Thank you for sharing your love with us. Help us to care for others. Help us to share your love with others. We love you. And you love us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, you can get two suckers today. One 
of these suckers, and one of those suckers were Smarties. I love the blue ones. I hunt for them. Yes, do it. Oh, root beer. So we can stand and sing. Yeah, they're just like the donuts. So we will stand and sing. What wondrous love is this? Two ninety two. and pressure to keep up, buck up, measure up, and build up have always been high. The exhaustion is real, and but the expectations are again creeping up, nudging us towards some vision of the good life defined by society that isn't always realistic or even possible. John's gospel focuses on Christ's divinity, but in this account he points to Jesus as human as he predicts his death. All of us, even Jesus, are fragile. All of us experience the fullness of life, birth and death. Even Jesus, he knew his death was coming, and coming soon. Dylan Thomas, who died at 39 from neglect and pneumonia, penned this famous poem. Do not go gentle into that good night. Do not go gentle into that good night. Humanity is fragile and vulnerable. <coughs> We are made of dust, and with dust we will return. Legit. But the stuff in the middle, the way we live life, is what matters. 
Jesus calls us to be different. Jesus wants us to be attentional. Jesus counts the cost. We need to be the aroma of Jesus in the world. John 12, 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Matthew, Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this because not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the word of God for the people of God. The giant elephant in the room was that Lazarus was dead and the then, just kidding, Jesus raised him from the dead. The elephant in the room was Lazarus. While the account appears to begin in a rather matter-of-fact way, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. His arrival in Bethany is not simply another casual event in Jesus' life. As the concluding text of John 11 indicates, both the people and the religious leaders are looking for Jesus. On the one hand, the people thought that Jesus would not come to Jerusalem. On the other hand, the chief priests and Pharisees want to arrest him if he does appear. They not only want to arrest Jesus in John eleven forty-seven 47 through 53, they want him to put him to death. Sure, he's caused some headaches for them over the past three years, but death? Really? What changed? The answer lies in this text. It's often with Lazarus. Stated succinctly, after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in verse 45, many of the Jews believed in him. Many of the Jews believed in him. The religious authorities didn't like that. And if Jesus is in Bethany, which is near Jerusalem, the odds are very favorable that he will also go to Jerusalem. So they're like dogs, like salivating. Sort of as a thank you and definitely to honor Jesus, they share this meal. It was literally a meal with Christian koinonia or fellowship with Jesus in the midst. Mary gives Jesus a lavish thank you, an act of pure devotion as she, in verse 3, took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with their, her hair. Since nard was a perfumed ointment imported from the Himalayas, was uncommon and expensive. Her extravagance is further underscored when the narrator John observes the house was filled with the fragrance of her perfume. Mike was talking to me about this Agatha Christie novel with an unreliable narrator. I hate those books with an unreliable narrator. John is a reliable narrator. This isn't the first time that the narrator had called Judas out. He did it when Jesus first called Judas Assyria in the beginning, in John 6, 71. This nearly identical label to this one, the one who was going to betray him, the one who was going to betray him. It's like the narrator wants us to get the motivations of the one who wanted to betray him or the person that's the thief that steals money from the common purse. This passage is about Mary's devotion. This passage about Mary devotion and Jesus approaching death and burial. In fact, Mary's love, Mary's act of love, she gives Jesus a very precious gift. Mary's gift brings to culmination his journey to the resurrection. His journey to give his very life. Jesus speaks the words no one wants to admit. He was not always going to be around. How many of you are hesitant to say you're not always going to be around? I'm hesitant. Mm. I don't say that. So many of us have said to a loved one who speaks the truth about the 
fragility of life, fragility of life, perhaps we get uncomfortable because it's more reveals the precious nature of the present moment, laying bare the beauty and our horror of it all. We don't want to talk about death. We poo-poo it. We shove it away. We don't want to talk about death. The indescribable pain we know we will one day face invades our senses like a pervasive perfume, inescapable. What if we stop denying the limited nature of our lives and be, breathe deeply into the fragrance of Jesus? Not the Febreze can. I'm not going to spray it. Maybe I'll spray it. <laughs> this candle has been with me since Christmas. I'm getting away from the Febreze can. So, this is Fraser Fur. It reminds me of Christmas. And it's been on my dog's kennel. <laughs> covering up the smell of the dog. And so, may we be the fragrance of Jesus, the aroma of Jesus. Not the Febreze can sprayed to cover our... Mm. But may we be the fragrance of Jesus filling the room... Every time I walk into that dining room, whoo, I'm reminded. I'm like, Febreze is a short time moment. But the fragrance of this candle is forever. Forever if we don't light it. And though my dad gave it to me, he lights them all over the house, making my mom cough and sneeze and whatever. I am not going to light this, Matt Mac. I'm not going to light this candle because I want it to last. What if we stop denying the limited nature of our lives and breathe in the aroma? of Jesus and breathed it out. What happens then? Jesus was different. We begin with the setting of the story. Jesus has come to Bethany to be with his friends and fellow followers, and certainly this region was gushing with heightened interest in Jesus, who had just raised one of their own from the dead. Faithful Jews and even non-Jews were curiously seeking more of who this rabbi was. There was something different about him from the other teachers and leaders. He taught revolutionary ideas, like turning the other cheek to your enemies, called out the scribes and the Pharisees for their false piety, and welcomed and ate with sinners. He just had a reputation, an aroma, if you will, that people clearly knew of. We are called to learn from his example, aren't we? Does anyone around us know there is something different about us? Did our life make them curious to what or who lurks in our distinctiveness? Do they inquire about the difference? If it is not God's plan that our co-workers or neighbors should be able to easily pick us out of the crowds and recognize that we are followers of Jesus, then what are we here for? Do our lives and words and unrandom acts of kindness flesh out this plan, God's plan to bring all people to Jesus? Jesus was intentional. Not only was different, Jesus was intentional. It was also six days before the Passover in the last week of Christ's life. This text is part of our Holy Week lectionary. Essential as it was of one of Jesus' last opportunities to lead and impact his followers. It was his last chance. He was looking to capture every fleeting opportunity to demonstrate what his kingdom would look like. Martha was serving a meal, and the recently dead, Lazarus, dined with Jesus at the table. Funny time for a kingdom lesson, but dying trees, drawing water from a well, a storm in a boat, these were the common things that Jesus used, and they became his greatest teaching devices. He intentionally looked for every spiritual conversation starter that presents itself. A meal interrupted by a worship event? Huh is a chance to communicate this coming passion to this curious assembly. We learn from Jesus' example about a lens through which to observe our world. 
God is working all things together for our good. Echoes of this truth are in Romans 8.28. All things in Greek means all things and includes all people and all things. We don't need cleverly perfumed evangelism tools to share God with people like the fruit breeze bottle that oh, sprays, then turns off, sprays, then turns off. We need to be the Fraser fur candle. We only need to be look like Christ. We only need to be like Christ, looking for everyday opportunities to speak of who God is and how we are to be at the work in their lives of the curious crowd. How we act is what people see. I will invite you to take one of the little Jesuses with you, ha ha, in the bowl in the back. And if you don't have one, take one for yourself and then pick up another one. And I want you to hide this little Jesus around the world. At the McDonald's, you may frequent. At the Dunkin' Donuts, where you may get your coffee. At the Walmart, you may... eh, At a park. At a playground. I challenged the four-year-olds last week, and I brought them little Jesuses this week. And they were so excited. Jessica Ritt sent me a picture of Everett eating a cereal with little Jesus in front of him, watching him. It's awesome, and it brings joy, and the world needs so much joy. Is not it joyful to see the little Jesus all over the congregation, the, the room? I mean, a little Jesus is over there, a little Jesus is over there, a little Jesus is over there. I've, yep. Little Jesus are everywhere, and they keep moving. I see a little Jesus. Oh, you can count little Jesus is everywhere. They, they did. The preschoolers did. However, let them be curious. Let the crowds be curious. What is this, a little Jesus at the park? What is this, a little Jesus at the playground? What is this, a little Jesus at the Dunkin' Donuts? If we proclaim Christ, if we proclaim the little Jesus that seeks to bring joy and seeks to have a deeper meaning, I mean, Enoch has covered the theater workshop with little Jesuses. And his teacher loves it because he can't, she can't tell people about Jesus, but he's covered the theater workshop. Spreading the love of Jesus is like sonar. We look for the kingdom blips to appear on the screen of our friends' lives. This tells us that an omnipresent God, a fully present, always available God, who is at work, even when we don't know it. Elizabeth Gilbert shares this story. Some years ago, I was stuck on a crosstown bus in New York City during rush hour. Traffic was barely moving. The bus was filled with cold, tired people who were deeply irritated with one another with their rainy, sleety weather, with the world itself. Two men barked at each other about a shove that might or might not have been intentional. A pregnant woman got on and nobody offered her a seat. Rage was in the air, no mercy will be found here. But as the bus approached 7th Avenue, the driver got on the intercom. Folks, he said, I know you've had a rough day and you're frustrated. I can't do anything about the weather or traffic, but here's what I can do. As each one of you gets off the bus, I'll reach out my hand to you. As you walk by, drop your troubles into the palm of my hand. Don't take your problems home to your families tonight. Just leave them with me. My route goes right by the Hudson River, and when I drive by there later, I will open the window and throw your troubles in the water. Sound good? It was as a spell had lifted. Everyone burst out laughing, faces gleamed with surprised delight. People who had been, who'd been pretending for the past hour not to notice each other as existence were suddenly grinning at each other. Is this guy serious? Oh, he was serious. At the next stop, just as promised, the driver reached out his hand, palm up, waiting. One by one, all the exiting commuters placed their hand just above his 
and mind the gesture of dropping something into his palm. Some people laughed as they did this. Some teared up, but everyone did it. We live in a hard world, my friends. Sometimes it's extra difficult to be a human being. Sometimes you have a bad day. Sometimes you had a bad day that lasts for several years. There are times when everything seems cloaked in darkness. You long for the light but don't know where to find it. But what if you're the light? What if you're the very agent of illumination that a dark situation begs for, longs for? That's what the bus driver taught me. That anyone can be the light at any moment, no matter who you are or where you are, or how mundane or tough your situation may seem. I believe you can illuminate our, your world. In fact, I believe it's the only way the world will ever be illuminated, one bright act of grace at a time, all the way down to the river. How are we being the aroma of Jesus? By intentionally looking for everyday object lessons in which we can speak of the great freedom that living a life in and with and through Jesus presence to curious onlookers. How are we being Jesus to everyday people? How are we being Jesus to each of us? Jesus counts the cost. Now move into the deliberate details John uses to demonstrate how costly this act of worship was for Mary. The perfume's weight is purity, the conversion of Mary's own hair into a servant's foot towel. Judas' objections to the ridiculous expense is cost one year at wages. Would you spend, would you spend $50,000 on a bottle of perfume to dump it out on someone's feet? Even the people watching this extravagance thought she was nuts. John wants us to know that there is a huge cost and sacrifice for Mary. How beautiful an aroma must God think this scent of Mary's sacrifice must be? We know how passionate Jesus was for the cause of the poor and marginalized. Amen? And yet he honors the cost of Mary's sacrifice for him. How is following Jesus costing us something right now? Do we demonstrate regular personal expense on behalf of others? Does anyone protest that we are being too lavish in the name of Christ? Too much the aroma of Jesus? I'll answer that question for you. We can never do too much for Jesus. We're called to spread the scent of Jesus. We're called to be different. We're called to be intentional. We're called to spread Jesus' aroma around upside the mountain and down the other side. Spring is flung. Flowers are popping out everywhere. I hope they don't freeze on the t Tuesday and Wednesday freeze. But God's resurrection does. It was on our windshield this morning. The pollen. God's resurrection dust. Had to wipe the window washer. Pollen is starting to be all over our cars. When we were in Atlanta, it was crazy the pollen we would walk through like snow leaving our footsteps Ooh. but i started calling it resurrection dust because it's bringing new life how do we spread resurrection dust how do we spread the aroma of jesus how do we spread the love and grace that jesus wants to share with the world how do we share that how do we share that by getting God's resurrection dust all over us, even in our pores, even in our crevices, let's be the light of the bus driver. Let's be the aroma of Jesus. We can do it. We can bring God's kingdom to earth if we but tap into the Holy Spirit, if we but tap into the power of Jesus, we but tap in to the goodness of God. We can spread the aroma of Jesus in every day, in every way, in all the times. Amen? Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to spread your aroma. But sometimes our candles are snuffed out. Please give us your resurrection power. Please give us your resurrection spirit. 
that we may have hope eternal and renewed in you. You're the only hope and help in which we stand. Help us tap into your grace, your love for the world, to spread your aroma, to spread your light in all ways, in all days, in all the ways we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Appropriately, our closing hymn is I Surrender All. I Surrender All. Number 354. Please stand. to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with the love and power. Let thy blessing fall on me. Let God's blessings fall on us as we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world as disciples of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat>
Y si mi 